This is The Big Three. I'm Heather Harrington along with Will West. Will, after today's episode of The Big Three, we're going to have a basketball champion by the time me and you get together again. And it's going to be Villanova. So there's that. <laughs> so, and meet the new boss, same as the old boss. But no, we will know who the champion's going to be in the final four matchups. Yeah. This has been the best tournament I can remember seeing maybe in my lifetime. Really? At least since You've the enjoyed early the 90s. upsets? It's been unbelievable. How okay. many last second shots? How many upsets? Yeah chaos but we still have gotten those blue blood matchups like a duke versus kansas they've been it's been fantastic to watch i think right now so for me this tournament has been unreal going forward though i'll take michigan the knockoff loyola chicago on yeah. saturday and nothing against sister jean i know divine intervention has been there i just think that eventually coaching wins out not that Moser's not a good coach, but John Beeline's the best tournament coach we have in basketball. On the other side, give me Villanova against Kansas. Kansas needs to get to go a certain way for them to win. Villanova will beat you any way that you want to play. And I think that they also get to the free throw line and yeah. hit their free throws. Free throws have been one of the biggest factors of why we've seen some of these upsets. We've seen this uh, tournament. Okay, I'm going to agree with you on the left side of the bracket. I do think Michigan takes care of Loyola, so you should be very nervous because I yeah, haven't gotten anything right. Death. Yeah, I have nothing right right headed into the final four we're both saying this <laughs> on that uh, left side. Now on the right side, the thing that scares me, even though I have Kansas uh, becoming the national champion, what scares me about Villanova is now they have found a way to win without the three ball. That was something that plagued them early on in the season when they would shoot under 20% from beyond the arc. They couldn't win a game. Yeah. They even lost to St. John's, who was three games below 500 at the time. So now they figured that out. I do think you are right, and they probably are your champions. But that means uh, we're all going to have to wear maroon and gold next week as uh, House Gryffindor <laughs> takes the title, right? <laughs> Since none of us. I've never seen one of those movies, but I found that I was a Gryffindor. So there's there's that. Oh, okay. Yeah. Well, we're in good company. Yeah, there, there you yeah. go. Yeah, you definitely don't want to be a Slytherin. <laughs> there might be a couple of people in this building that are Slytherins. Not to mention Eric Kane, my name. <laughs> okay, now let's move forward. Let's talk women's tournament. UConn slaughtered their Elite Eight opponent. They're headed to their 11th consecutive Final Four. Is this good for women's basketball or is this bad for women's basketball? It depends. Are you, I tune in for the five, four, three games a year, the Final Four and the Finals, then it's probably good because they're such a big brand. If you actually like women's basketball and follow women's basketball, mm -hmm. this is bad. You need depth of sport. This ain't 1994 where everybody wants to celebrate the Bulls winning how many ever straight. People don't like dynasties right now. We get bored with everything. We have ADD as a society. That's true. Also, they won four straight. It's enough already. I'm tired of looking at them. So, no, this is not good whatsoever for women's basketball that UConn is so dominant, unless you're not really a fan. I do like uh, the changeup. You didn't have just the normal teams being the one seeds in the tournament. Now, all the one seeds did get to the Final Four, but you've got teams like a Mississippi State in the Final Four. You've got teams like a Louisville with uh, Jeff Walls yeah. finally having his team as a one seed. At, uh, so I'm, I'm excited about it. I do think it's UConn's to lose at this point, but I was shocked last year when Mississippi State took them out in the semifinals. I so was, anything can happen. I'd adopted Oregon as the, the team since the Lady Vols were out. And that, yeah. So maybe I'm the kiss of death. Sorry, yeah. Holly. <laughs> okay, I'm going to need you to adopt UConn. <laughs> Just take one for the team now. Okay, and, and then the last question. Why are we not talking more about Tennessee football? Uh, what are you supposed to talk about? You don't have your quarterback battle yet. Yeah. You don't know who the warm bodies that are going to be out there necessarily are and what they're doing right now because we don't see anything of practice. I like that there's going to be an actual spring game instead of let's do some kind of weird up, up, down, down, left, right, left, right, BA start stuff that Butch like to do. Yeah. That's cool. But other than that, there's literally nothing that you can gain from this outside of who changed positions. We don't know how they're doing. I mean, if you want to believe everything that a coach that closes a lot of practice tells you and accept that as gospel truth, yeah, yeah go right ahead. Because people usually hide things because they don't have something to hide. Yeah, R Richard Nixon wasn't hiding no, no, anything, no. right? And, and I'm not yes. saying Jeremy Pruitt's a bad guy no. for doing it. Everybody in sports Everybody does, does that, it. They're all paranoid. But what but it means is you can't, there's yeah. nothing to be gained right now. Nothing yeah. to be learned with I, what's going on in, in practice. I think we still need to go at least another week. If we when we get to the halfway point around eight practices in, which uh, six of those would have been in full pads, they've probably already scrimmaged once or twice by then, even though that'll be closed. I think then you're going to see this coaching staff have more of a grasp on what this actual identity is. And you might start getting some nuggets from there. But and, it, still and that's the key. I think yeah. the key is don't you can't live and die with every day of spring practice what happened. But what happens five days in? What happens eight days in? Yeah. What happens 12 days in? What happens six, uh, kind of 
peek in and look at the aggregate of four or five days of practice in a row, what they say, and you may get some type of a picture of what's going on. Do you think they're going to open players up? Uh, no, no, I do not. Ooh, that could get a little boring. I, I think there will be times they will. <laughs> it'll be very Saban-esque. Yeah. There will be times they will, and you get a butt ton of access, and then other times you just don't get anything. Just totally done. Yeah. yeah. Good luck with that, Josh Ward. <laughs> All right, that's going to wrap it up for us. We'll talk basketball championship next week on our episode of The Big Three.